Let's open Microsoft Office Excel from the All Programs menu. We'll start by clicking on the Start button, pointing to All Programs, and then locating the Microsoft Office group. In the Microsoft Office group, we'll click once and then choose Microsoft Office Excel 2007. Let's take a look at the new Microsoft Office 2007. We'll start by looking at the Office button. All of the Microsoft Office applications have the Office button in the top left corner. This circular button displays most features that were previously found on the File menu. Let's click this button once to explore these features. The New option, Open, Save, Save As, as well as Printing and Sending options are all found on the Microsoft Office button. Let's click back in the Excel window to turn the button off. Now let's look at the Quick Access Toolbar. The Quick Access Toolbar is a group of small buttons that displayed in the screen next to the Microsoft Office button. The Quick Access Toolbar is easily customizable to suit the needs of the user. Let's click on the drop-down arrow and see what our choices are. We have options for New, Open, Email, etc. All of these options are easily added to the Quick Access Toolbar by simply clicking once on the name of the button you'd like to add. Now that we've clicked on the Quick Access Toolbar New button, we've added the New button to the Quick Access Toolbar. To remove that button from the toolbar, simply click the drop-down arrow and click on New. And now that button has been removed. To add other features, simply use the More Commands option and you can now choose through many of Excel's features. This is a great way to add things that you use frequently to your Quick Access Toolbar. Once you've added the button that you would like to add, click OK to return to the Quick Access Toolbar. Again, to remove that button, do the reverse. The next item in the Microsoft Excel screen that we want to be familiar with is called the ribbon. The ribbon is what was previously known as the menu bar. The ribbon has word choices across the top of the screen. Within each tab are many options organized by their content. For example, on the Review tab, all of the proofing features are organized in one section, as well as the comments changes. Each of the ribbon options is organized in this manner to make it easier for you to find the features you're looking for. The ribbon takes up a fair amount of the Microsoft Excel screen. If you'd like to minimize the ribbon when you're not using it, simply position your mouse on the tab, double click, and that will reduce the menu so that you have more room in the screen for working with your Excel data. If you'd like to bring the ribbon back, simply click once on the tab you'd like to use. When you're not using it, double click, and the ribbon is condensed. Next on the Microsoft Excel screen is the Name Box. The Name Box allows you to quickly navigate to a specific location in your workbook. The Name Box uses both names and cell addresses. Later in this class, we'll learn how to add named cells. Right now, we can use a cell address and simply press Enter to move to that cell in the Excel workbook. The next feature in the Microsoft Excel screen is the formula bar. The formula bar appears at the top of the spreadsheet area. The formula bar is where you add formulas to your Excel workbook. Although formulas can be typed in the current cell, the formula bar gives you a little bit more flexibility in how that works. For example, in Microsoft Office Excel 2007, the formula bar can be resized, so if you have a long and complex formula, you can stretch that area out longer so you can see the entire formula. A formula that fits in this Excel formula bar may not be easy to view when editing in the cell. In Excel, you can edit in either the formula bar or in the cell itself. We'll press Escape now to exit the formula bar. The next 
area of the Microsoft Excel screen is your worksheet area. The worksheet area is divided by columns that are lettered and rows that are numbered. The intersecting point of a column and a row is called the cell address. For example, the cell address of this cell is cell B4. Cell addresses are used in creating formulas and in navigating throughout your workbook. At the bottom of the screen, we have our Excel navigating buttons. These four buttons are used to navigate throughout the worksheet tabs. They do not select the worksheet tabs, they simply allow you to see them. By default, an Excel file has three worksheet tabs Sheet 1, Sheet 2, and Sheet 3. These are roughly equivalent to pages, although one worksheet may print out on more than one physical page. When you have only three worksheet tabs, you do not need to use the navigating buttons because all three sheet tabs show. Should you have many more worksheet tabs, the first navigation button would show you the first worksheet tab. The second button scrolls one tab at a time to the left. The third button scrolls one tab at a time to the right. And the last button scrolls all the way to the last of the worksheet tabs. Once you can see the worksheet tab that you're looking for, simply click on that tab to bring it to the front. You'll notice that's the active worksheet tab because the sheet tab is white and the sheet name is in bold. Next we have the scroll bars. The scroll bars are common to all Windows application. In Excel, they look slightly different. The Excel horizontal scroll bar is somewhat shorter than it is in other applications. You can use that scroll bar to drag back and forth to navigate side to side in your Excel workbook. If you'd like to make your scroll bar wider, simply position your mouse pointer on the bar to the left and drag until the worksheet scroll bar is the size you desire. The vertical scroll bar on the right is not necessary to size it. However, you can use that to drag up and down within your Excel workbook. Lastly, we have the status bar. The status bar tells you what mode you're in. Typically in Excel, you're in ready mode when you are not performing any actions. If I start to type a formula, you'll notice that our mode changes from ready to enter. Let's type a quick formula to see how this works. Once I create the formula and press enter, I'm back in ready mode. However, if I try to edit the formula and I use my mouse to select something else, it will change the contents of the formula. Just use caution when using the mouse in the middle of a formula. To cancel this change, press the escape key on the keyboard. Also on the status bar are our view buttons. By default, we view Excel workbooks in normal mode. However, in Microsoft Office Excel 2007, we have the option to view it in Page Layout View. Page Layout View shows you how the document looks, including its margins and headers and footers. Page Break Preview allows you to modify the different areas where the pages break on your printout. Lastly, on our status bar, we can easily change our zoom by dragging the zoom bar on the Microsoft Excel status bar. We can make the screen appear larger and smaller to fit the items we need to see. Please note that the zoom bar does not change the effect on the printout. This is only for editing. So now that we're familiar with the Microsoft Excel window, let's look at how to create some files. Get started today with free access at handsolutions.com.